Welcome to DVD 4 in the Intermediate Rigging Series from CG Academy. This DVD is going to completely be based on facial animation and the setup of them. We're going to be working with two different kinds of facial rigs, and we're going to be discussing the differences between them and how to set them both up. The goal of facial animation is to really bring the characters to life. We watch each other's faces uh, a lot when we speak. We look at people's eyes. We watch their mouth move. We see the nuances of how their face moves. And it tells a lot about people and what they're speaking about, uh, their mood, their uh, disposition. And you can read a lot by looking at a person's face. If this is lost in character animation, if, if the face is ignored, and you don't have the kind of really dynamic movements that should be in a face, you, you really start to lose the performance. Really good actors use their face, use the expressions on their face to help sell the performance that they're, they're portraying at the time. That has to become apparent in your animation. Every good character animator will utilize the face to, to help sell the whole performance. They'll use the body to help, help sell the face. Everything is, uh, works together to be able to sell a really good performance. Lip sync is the first thing everybody considers with facial animation. That it, That is the, the thing that we have to worry about. Can the character speak? The funny thing is, is that it's actually speech that is really the least important in some respects of the overall facial performance. We don't move our mouths an enormous amount when we speak. Uh, we also tend to uh, sort of slide over a lot of the um, pronunciation. When character animating, actually, it's even more apparent uh, you'll see sometimes where people try to key every single movement, every single phonem that the mouth goes through in a performance. And what happens is the gums look like they just start to flap. The mouth is moving too much. What's really important about a face is the whole face tells a story, is that you actually get the kind of expression out of it while the character's speaking. That when the character's happy, the character looks happy. So it's a lot about having good facial expressions, good range of motion in the face, and for the most part, you can actually just get the jaw to go up and down in some simple animations. And you can almost nail most speech with a little bit of lip movement. But it's all about getting the, the character to feel as though they are in the part and that they are uh, saying the line in a fearful way or in a happy way or in an angry way. And that'll help sell the performance even more. So getting a good overall robust facial rig can help that, something the animators can manipulate easily. The current setup that I'm showing you is based off a blended morph system. There's really three systems that you can use. The first being an absolute morph system. Absolute morphs meaning that the morph targets would be used, but you'd model a happy, a sad, you know, an A, an O, an E, uh, the letters that you um, need, the, the phonemes that you need, and the expressions that you need, and you'd simply morph from one to the other. It's pretty much sort of a straight ahead morph. This system is a blended system which isn't using anything specific, but being driven by this UI. So we're going to uh, explore how to set this up and be able to create characters that have got more range of motion than their original intended set of uh, morph targets have. This system actually uh, is best described in a book called Stop Staring by Jason Ospia. That book covers a lot more than just the facial setup, um, which is actually done in Maya but also a lot about why he'd set it up in the specific ways that uh, he uses. It has this similar sort of uh, UI idea to it, on-screen UI item to make it a little more tactile for the animators, and discusses how to set up a blended system, but more so it actually discusses how to actually, how and when to, to animate a character's face. This DVD uh, is designed to show you the uh, best way to go about using it in Max 7. The same processes can be used in Max 6, or actually can be taken into Max 8 with some of the new tools actually simplified somewhat. The second system that we're going to be discussing is a bone-driven animation system. This system uses basically a stretchy bone setup with a face skinned to the bones. And then it uses a control system that are tacked right onto the face. This control system is actually quite unique and has a very interesting uh, setup where the control actually controls the skin but looks like it's sliding around it. Also I have controls that can control trolls so that they never get uh, moved away from their intended location of use by the animator. We're also going to discuss how to set up uh, a facial pose capture system 
using the blended morph target system that could simply be used on this system or any other system actually using the pen attribute holder that's available for my website. Both systems have a good range of motion. The intent of this DVD isn't to show a complete rig, although this one's uh, fairly close, but the blended system lacks many controls that are needed to actually have it uh, usable in a production. There are quite a few other uh, um, morph targets that would be needed uh, to be able to get some of the phonemes in, that are needed to create uh, proper speech. Say, for instance, things like the letter F, P, might be difficult to do with this current system. But I cover enough that shows you how to actually go about setting it all up so that you can easily keep doing the same thing over and over with different targets and be able to set up a character's head that does everything that you'd possibly want it to do. On this DVD, there are 17 chapters covering both the morph and bone-based systems. In chapter 1, eye rigging, we're going to model the eyes for animation and set up the pupils so that it can be dilated. Chapter 2, rigging the eyes, we're going to set the eye direction up using look at constraints to target a target object. Chapter 3, setting up head for morphing, we're going to look at reducing morph data using the skin utilities for trans transferring skin data and also dispelling a myth about the speed of morph targets. Chapter 4, Blended Morph System, we're going to look at how a blended morph system can be set up. We're also going to set up the jawbone, we're going to skin the uh, face to the jawbone, and link the teeth into the jawbone. Chapter 5, Blended Morphing or Muscle-Based Morphing, we're going to start creating blended morph targets and corrective shapes for the jawbone. We're also going to work with a mirror morph scripts that I've written just for this DVD. Chapter 6, Creating Facial UI. We're going to script spline UI items, and we're also going to set up a limiting system for the objects using script controllers. Chapter 7, Facial Rigging. We're going to look at connecting the UI to the morphs using Reaction Manager, and then building all the targets and connecting them to the UI system. Chapter 8, Eyebrows and Scripting Reaction Manager. We're going to connect up the eyebrow shapes to the controls, and also scripting the morph shapes to controls using Reaction Manager. Chapter 9, using Pen Attribute Holder 2 to store poses. We're going to look at writing custom attribute definitions in MacScript, instancing controllers to attributes, and setting and storing and reusing poses using Pen Attribute Holder 2. Chapter 10, we're going to start on the bone-based facial system. We're going to look at placing bones in the face and scripting stretchy bones. Chapter 11, we skinning facial bones, and we're going to look at skinning the face to the bone system we've generated. Chapter 12, creating control objects. We're going to set up and create control objects for the face and connect the bones to the controls. We're also going to set up a fall off system for them so that one control controls many bones around the face. Chapter 13, mirroring objects without scale. We're going to look at how to mirror over point helpers from the right side to the left side of the face using a simple script so that we don't end up with any scale factors on any of the objects. We're also going to do a few corrections and updates to the rig as we go along so that we're always adjusting what we've done. Chapter 14, Rigging the Eyes and Brows and Lids. We're going to set up the eyebrows and set up the eyelids using the bone-based system. Chapter 15, Connecting the Jawbone. We're going to connect the facial rig up to the jawbone so that we can open the mouth, pull the whole system open with it. We're also going to do some more corrections to the jaw and how the jaw works and it is set up with the rest of the facial system. In chapter 16, we're going to add a fine level of control. We're going to script the uh, control objects that can be added to every single point along around the face, the intersection of all the joints. And we'll also finalize the facial setup. Chapter 17, we're going to do max 7 and 8 extras. For Max 8, we're going to use and set up limit controllers and replace the scripted system that we're using in the current DVD. We're also going to do a Max 7 and 8 extra where we're going to use the exposed transform helpers that were added in Max 7, and we're going to use those in conjunction with the new script controllers in Max 8 that allow you to be able to store nodes and variables right in the script controller so that they're name independent. In Chapter 18, this will be our conclusion, and we'll wrap up the subjects that we've covered so far. Okay, we have a lot to cover in this DVD, so let's get started with getting the iRig on the Ogre set up.